Well, we'll go now to our final public comment. Rosie, would you get that fired up? Kind of, sort of. I'm going to use my mobile device um, for a timer, so I'll just let members of the audience and public know that um, when your three minutes is getting close. So we're going to start first with Nyla Pipes, followed by Newton Cook, and then Tom McVicker. Seems like a very long walk from back there. <laughs> Nyla Pipes, One Florida Foundation. Um, I'm going to keep my comments brief. I just wanted to uh, go a little bit further on something I heard. Earlier, Ms. Meads questioned about the sources of nitrogen in Lake Okeechobee, and her follow-up question was regarding the presence of human fecal matter in the lake. And I wanted to follow up on that because, um, you know, I barely let a opportunity to speak about our sewage infrastructure problems in the state of Florida pass me by. There are over 124,000 septic tanks north of the lake. I know that Okeechobee um, is working to get off of theirs, but as you move further up into the Headwaters region, there are many, many, many septic tanks directly on the water bodies. Um, and that's not the only problem they have north. I happen to know uh, during Hurricane Irma, an entire wastewater treatment plant went under for days, weeks even. Um, so there's a lot that needs to be done as far as our sewage infrastructure goes. And the reason I talk about that is because there was a direct question about hum human fecal bacteria and, or human fecal matter. The thing is, is the way that septic systems are designed, they're not designed to remove nutrients. What you get in nutrient reduction in a standard on-site septic system especially the old school kind, right? Not, not these new ones that they're starting to design to get ahead of this. Um, in the way of nutrient removal is primarily um, attributed to dilution. So it's not the feces that's really the issue. It's the urea. Urea is very high in nitrogen. So I just wanted to really put a clear point on that since the question was raised and to point out that that information about what we know about the sources of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus in Lake Okeechobee is in the Lake OB map. Thank you very much. Tom McVicker, you re recognized to speak. Thank you. It's been a while, hasn't it? Uh, sorry to keep you late. I uh, couldn't get by this morning. I have three things I wanted to mention. Well, four. The first one is that picture of all the stuff floating in the canal down there. Rest assured that most of what they throw in doesn't float. So just something to think about. Um, I want to have a couple comments on John's talk. I need to talk a little bit about Losum. And I want to talk about Jackie's Triangle. Uh, John. John's talk, the, the STA chart that Lawrence also uses, I really like it. The only thing I would add is it doesn't say which STAs are included in that. I don't think STA 5, 6 should be because it's not on a lake flow path, but I, don't, I couldn't tell if it was or not. So that's just a note. The other thing is this adaptive protocols. Uh, it's it's kind of like this myth that's out there that it exists. It doesn't exist. The Corps has never followed it. The district cites it occasionally but doesn't follow it. The 1,000 CFS that's being released now, and I'm fine with that. I'm not saying don't do it. It's not part of the plan deviation. It's not part of adaptive protocols. It might be a good thing to do, and it's a popular thing to do, and, and, and you all can do it, but it's not adaptive protocols or plan deviation. Now, talking about LOSUM, uh, for LOSUM, um, my partner and I, Bill Baker, represent what we call the Lakeside Communities. They don't call themselves that. There are seven clients in the rural areas around Lake Okeechobee that have hired us to represent them on the project delivery team. It's Hendry County, Okeechobee County, Glades County, City of Clewiston, City of Moorhaven, City of Okeechobee, and the Okeechobee Utility Authority. Uh, I don't know that they've ever worked together on something like this before. Uh, and I think it's, it's uh, opening their eyes a little bit to what they can do. We have consistent direction from every one of them, their top priorities. These are rural agricultural communities. All their constituents are affected by agriculture and recreational fishing in the lake. What they want to make sure doesn't get lost in the LOSIM is water supply for agriculture, 
and a healthy Lake Okeechobee. And the proposal that you hear talked about, BB, oh, that's the lakeside communities thing. If you look at the results, those two categories come up really high, as well as the rest of them. We tried to get everything high. We submitted a balanced proposal, unlike some of the others. But really, there is no plan out there. None of what's been submitted is a plan. It's things for the core to consider as they de develop a plan, and that's where we are. I'm not going to try and hype BB versus DD or any, any of that. Some people tried to do that this morning, and I noticed they got the numbers wrong, uh, and that's because the data just came out last night. Uh, there's tons of data. It'll take a long time to look at it and to understand it and hopefully to ask questions of the modeling staff. The, that's, but that's not all. We have the data. We have a bunch of numbers that came out of the model. We don't have any documentation, not of the models that were used because they've changed, not of the basic data set. We were told a year ago there was a report that would def explain the data set. That, that's not ready yet. The five plans that, that have been released, there is no schedule. There's no kind of like line chart that shows the zones or the decision trees. That's not out yet. I was in COP for as many years as it took. COP had operational tables, detailed operational tables that were in the process early and everybody saw it and everybody understood it as we got to the end of the road together. We have to do that with LOSIM. There is no way you're going to do that by July, period. The Mr. only way you're going to adopt the schedule by July Mr. is if Baker. you tell the people that are out there, we're not interested in your thought. Can I have an extra minute to talk about Jackie's Triangle? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. It's a brilliant idea. And what it came from was Jackie digging into the law of the three agencies and what they do. I think you all desperately need that kind of effort to look into water supply law and water supply policy. You're the executive agency. You aren't the policy-making agency. There are 50 years of precedent and law, both by the state and the Corps and the Congress, that's built into current water supply law. And LOSM has to encompass that and has to recognize that. And I think for you all to make a wise choice, you really need to know what your role is in it and what constraints there might be, just like there are, Jackie, that you found out about when you looked into 4061. You got that same situation here, only it won't be a triangle, it'll be an octagon or some other weird shape, but I don't think you can get there credibly if you don't do that. Thank you, and I'm sorry for going over my time. Mr. Chairman, I'm gonna to switch to virtual now. Becky Harris, you're recognized to speak, followed by Mike Connor and then Mike Alpenbein. Hello, can you hear me? We hear you, Ms. Harris. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, Pandora and I sure wish we were there in person. She loved these meetings. Uh, but anyway, I am Becky Harris from Stewart, and as most of you know, I had one of the six dogs who became deathly ill from microcystin poisoning in 2018. The microcystin came from the algae, which came from the LACO discharges. I am speaking this morning for a West Palm resident whose dog, Bella, died. I emailed you pictures of Bella, a beautiful eight-year-old boxer who loved to go boating with her owners. The picture shows Bella at the Palm Beach Emergency Vet Clinic. She has an IV in and blood is on the towel that she is on. Bella, like Finn, the poodle from Stewart, was bleeding out, a clear sign of liver failure. I sent another picture of the C-51 canal behind their house days after Bella became sick. The picture shows bright green water. There's a slide that goes into the water next to a boat dock. C can you imagine anyone sliding down that slide anymore into that water? Um, Bella's family took the boat out on the canal on May 24th. They brought it back in and Bella ate some of the vegetation that came off the boat. Bella becomes sick is then taken to the ER and unfortunately dies. My last email to you is from Greenwater Labs. It is an analysis of Bella's vomit. Page four gives a summary of the results. The last sentence says it all, and I quote, the levels of microcystin detected in the vomit sample were substantially high enough to have caused intoxication. Unfortunately, this West Palm Beach family is now sending their Bella for necropsy. 
They want to know for sure it was microcystin poisoning. Unfortunately, here we have another canary in the coal mine. We have too many canaries and now too many coal mines. So as I did in 2018, I will be back to you all with the results of the necropsy. So there's so much to say, but I, only, I know I only have three minutes. Um, most importantly, just like in 2018, sampling was done with zero warnings. The district sampled the C51 on May 6th. Results showed high microcystin levels. They sampled the next week, and there were high levels again, yet there were no signs anywhere along the canal. It appears that the West Palm drinking water warnings were also delayed. This is what happened in Stewart in 2018. Samples taken, high levels found, no warning. DEP, DOH, Blue Green Algae Task Force, District, we've talked about this, and nothing has changed. Who is responsible for warning the public? Finally, these recent problems in West Palm, the years of lost summers on, along the St. Lucie, the Tallusahatchee, the high salinity levels in Florida Bay and Everglades, all point to the lack of balance. I encourage this board to push for the Lowsome Plan CC, which truly allows balance for all. And then after that, can we please work on nutrient reduction? Thank you again, and hope to see you soon. Lucy Caputi, you're recognized to speak, followed by James Evans and then Mark Perry. Hello, can you hear me okay? I hear you. Good morning. Um, I've attended this meeting today to make my voice heard in regards to Florida's most important resource, water. The most recent mishandling of the issue in West Palm Beach put on display just one part of this completely broken system that touches the daily life of all Floridians. Never would I have thought in 2021 I would be hearing about locals' pets dying and young children getting sick from our water supply. This is simply unacceptable and needs to be remedied and fast before all is lost at a much larger scale. Now is the time for a dramatic change wherein our water system is not beholden to the interest of industrial agriculture. The Everglades are dying, our wildlife is dying, and our health is being put at risk. How many more reasons and warnings must we need? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Caputi. Brian Brom, you're recognized to speak, followed by Mike Elfenbein and then Gary Ritter. Hello, how are you? Uh, I'm Ryan Brown. I, uh, yeah, I was, my family was affected by the blue green algae last month. Can you hear me? We hear you. Hello. Okay. Yeah, I have a five, a seven year old, and a three and a two month old. And it, it really concerned me the way that the city handled it. Um, and so I did a little bit of research and I found out that you guys are pretty much in charge of all the water, which is much better because them dropping the ball and a complete failure on their behalf to, you know, acknowledge it and let the, you know, let the residents know. Uh, very concerning. I, I had two children that were throwing up for over a day, just nonstop. Um, I've been watching this entire meeting and, you know, and it's, I think you guys do a great job and I love it. The water management in South Florida really needs to be, you know, handled a little bit better with, the, you know, the, the residents. I, I don't know exactly how many people we have moving to Florida every day. Somebody said, somebody told me recently, like a thousand a week or a day or something. It's an insane number. And it, it seems like we don't even have enough water for the people that are already here. And I would, I would implore you to get, you know, the, the Army Corps in and, and just take care of this because you can't mess with people's drinking supply. You know, and our, our mayor was already, he was patting himself on the back of how good of a job he did. I mean, there was seven children like in my like area, which I live downtown with Palm, that were just sick as dogs all Memorial Day weekend. My wife was sick and she's breastfeeding. It's, you know, it's really, it's, 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 Really, you know, concerning. And my my water now smells, it's worse than my pool water. There's more bleach in my water now because they're treating the toxin than if there was a busted water main. I mean, you can smell it from the living room when you take a shower. Um, you know, I, 
I really hope that you take us into you know account when you're when you're doing all this instead of just like industry because you know I mean the state's made of people it's not made of companies you know yeah that, you know thank you for your time okay thank you Mr. Braun next we have Patty McNally followed by David Ray. Can you hear me? We hear you, Ms. McNally. Uh, my name is Patty McNally from West Palm Beach. I don't fish, I don't farm, but I am a human who drinks tap water, but no more. And because I live in West Palm Beach, I speak as a canary in that coal mine. In April, well, mid-April, I started running, drinking gallons of tap water every single day. One night, in the middle of the night, I woke up vomiting, first time in forever. I had recurring headaches, which I rarely get. Three blisters appeared on my lip, and another symptom, which I'm too proud to publicly announce, but it involves the restroom. Little did I know, while I was out running on May 1st, an algae bloom documented by the Lake Worth Water Keeper and reported to the DEP was seeping from the M Canal into grassy waters. The city tested and said, nah, that can't be right. Too high, must be an anomaly. It took three more tests and the rest of the month before anyone told us. It was May 28th. I was up to running two miles by then when the water alert was issued. Don't drink the tap water, it's toxic, and whatever you do, don't boil it. I would bet by that time I had consumed more tap water than any other person in West Palm Beach. I spoke at the next West Palm City Commission meeting. I'll tell you, they really, really just want to move on. And me, as a tap drinker, I was shocked their hair wasn't on fire. But I realized they don't know what you know, the very real dire health consequences of actually consuming water contaminated with cyanotoxin. I'm speaking today because you are the best governing board we've ever had. You replaced ineffective foot draggers who sat in the very seat you're in now. Please listen to the canaries and do everything in your power to keep Laco cyanotoxins from coming out my kitchen faucet. Please don't let our leaking, creaking, outdated, and broken Lake O management system break my trust in you. And please assure me by the actions you take that my good health matters more to you than a single stalk of sugar cane. Thanks for listening to me. Thank you, Ms. McNally. Our next public commenter is David Ray, followed by Emily Kenyon. Wow. Okay. Big shoes to follow. So uh, I thank you all for the opportunity to speak with you today. Um, I'm speaking as a concerned citizen of West Palm Beach and as just a, a native Floridian. This system has been broken for far too long. But I have trust in this board because like my fellow citizen just echoed, I will echo it again. This is the best board we've ever had. And you all are the strength that I need to, to step up for us. This Memorial Day weekend, my team and fellow volunteers in the community that always rally around making positive action, we got to the streets to serve water to, to our community because so many people didn't realize, one, the severity of the toxins in our water, but two, they didn't realize that this is not something you couldn't boil out. This is not something that the pitcher couldn't take care of. This is something that was killing animals, injuring children, and harming people outside of the advisory, not just the elderly or the young. For far too long, this system has been broken, and we haven't done anything about it. We keep talking about the different industries that are at play here, but we know what this is. Industrial agriculture has their money in everyone's pocket. We keep passing around these people that go working for the polluters, 
to regulating them and back and forth. And it's, listen, we have citizens here that need you all to stand with righteous indignation, with passion and compassion to, to, to hold the truth to power and stop this madness. West Palm Beach was unprepared completely and blindsided by this latest breach of toxins as if they were unaware of the, of the lurking danger just in our backyard. I don't know this, but I, this board can inform them and other communities close and south of us of the dangers that are going on as we keep uh, allowing um, the polluting of our waterway. So if we can just start to hold truth to power and pull back our private interest and just start to focus on what are we leaving for our children, what are we leaving for ourselves, I think we can start making headway. It doesn't matter what they contribute to your campaigns or what favors people do. At the end of the day, if the water is going to start killing people, it, 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 it has to be enough. So I know that this board has the teeth to actually make change, and I know that while it may not be your decision, you all are the people that represent us, and I believe in you because you all are the ones that can fight for us. Uh, again, I know these are not alone, yours alone, but I'm pleading to you to tell the Army Corps to start using reason. Mr. Ray, if you could please wrap up your comments. It's unreasonable and insane. No problem. What we are seeing is insane and unreasonable, and we need you to go back to us. And well on me, Mr. Ray, if you could please wrap up your comments. That's it. Thank you so much for all you do, and I hope you continue to uh, shine in the dark times. Thank you so much. Emily Kenyon, you're recognized to speak. Hello, everyone. I'm calling today to voice my concerns as a West Palm Beach resident and a lifelong resident of South Florida. I was born and raised here and I care about this area very much. It's my home. So when I heard that my tap water was contaminated with toxins from blue green algae and that boiling water still wouldn't make it drinkable, I was really scared. I rely on that water. I drink it every day. I give it to my cats. And, you know, we take the basic necessities like water for granted until we don't have access to it anymore. And what scares me the most is that the city of West Palm Beach had no idea what to do or how to handle the situation. They were just focused on finding a quick fix, and they didn't even ask the question of what causes this in the first place. Then I learned from the Palm Beach Post article uh, that Ms. Meads mentioned earlier that West Palm Beach city officials have been having behind-the-scenes meetings with uh, registered sugar industry lobbyist Tom McVicker, the same lobbyist who helped write the Wilson Plan Alternative BB, the same sugar lobbyist who was hired by Nikki Free to represent the Department of Agriculture as a member of the PDP and then was dismissed after public outrage. The same lobbyist who just got up there and told you that he is now on the PDT on behalf of cities around the lake. So I do not trust my city or Palm Beach County for that matter to make the right decision regarding our water when they are forming their water policy with consultants like Tommy Vicker from the sugar industry because the sugar industry doesn't care about West Palm Beach's water supply. They don't care about the environment, the, Ever the Everglades, or the estuaries, or beaches, or really any other industry besides their own. They not only want first dibs on the water, they're also the biggest polluter. And there is a pie chart from the district that clearly shows 88% of the phosphorus in Lake Okeechobee comes from agriculture, and only 9% comes from residential utilities or septic tanks. So I'm turning to you as the governing board to make the right decision, the right decision for everyone when it comes to Wilson. Mr. Lilipish is right. This is our wake-up call. Toxic water coming out of my faucet was my wake-up call. And we can't wait any longer to make changes to this broken system if we want clean water, which is a basic necessity that I can no longer take for granted. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Kenyon. Mr. Chairman, there are no more raised hands. Well, thank you, Rosie, and thank you all for your comments. Uh, we'll now go to uh, board member comments. And uh, Mr. Olipich. Thank you. I'll try not to forget my triangle before I leave tonight. And um, in all seriousness, um, I had asked, and I think 
it was kind of understood that there would be some feedback on the cooperating agreement between the three agencies, and I feel like I'm owed that. I feel like we're owed that. You know, it shouldn't take two months to figure it out, just being straight. And it, it, this is very serious. These people on the phone about their water in West Palm Beach or any of the other issues that we're dealing with here, you know, it is time. Yes, if we need to, like Mr. McVicker said, if, if, if we need to talk about water supply with the triangle, talk about water supply, talk about the law, talk about the EAA, talk about flood control, what a great presentation. But we also have to talk about our responsibility of human health. And it is staring us in the face, staring us in the face. And LOSUM isn't going to fix it right away either. You know, it could better it, or it could change it, or it could make it worse. But um, we have to have honest conversations about what's going on here. This is, a dog has died. Again, that, that gentleman said that his, and I believe him, that his children were throwing up. The lady, you know, this is crazy. We need to be communicating. The triangle is about communication. That's what it's about. So. Florida Department of Environmental Protection, FDACs, and the South Florida Water Management District, please cooperate and talk to each other all the time. And I think it should be done in public. I don't think it should be done behind closed doors like it's 1948. I think it should be done here. And I think somebody should be here at each one of our meetings from here on out. And there should be a report from each person Noah Valenstein is no longer with us. Um, I wish him all the very best. And um, I hope that maybe we can bring in the new person taking over his position. It would be a good time to put the triangle in, um, in operation. Um, and I don't mean to be mean or anything. I just, I really do feel very um, strongly about these, these issues of responsibility um, for us up here on this board, and, um, and, and we have to do what's right for, for everybody, um, not just those who are here all the time speaking, but for those who are living in cities trying to feed their kids and um, improve their health. Um, I wanted to thank Sean Cooley for the EAA sheet that he put out. I hope everyone will have a, a, some time to take a look at this sheet. It's uh, an update on the EAA reservoir. It's fantastic. And so many good things are happening at the district. And I know I just turned into a school teacher, you know. But um, th this, uh, this, the talent that comes out of this South Florida Water Management District staff is, is just unbelievable. And I thank all of the staff for everything that they're doing all of the time. And um, I especially wanted to thank um, Carolina Moran, because I had called her up about resiliency issues for Martin County. Uh, people were very concerned because they were ready to throw rocks on all of the causeways and not leave any place for um, windsurfers, you know, for recreation and also for the hermit crabs to come and lay their eggs. And um, her information that she gave me basically has possibly changed what was going to happen in our town. And so now they're talking about, you know, m maybe leaving some areas and not putting rocks everywhere. And uh, that was specifically because uh, she spent time giving me information and talking to me. Um, I also wanted to um, let, sorry, I don't I'm, you get my name straight here. Um, I wanted to let Mr. DeBold know that I was really very, um, touched by your presentation and all those people that are working so hard um, to protect us. And um, I always thought that it would be a great story, someone to write the experience of being in those pump stations during a hurricane. And maybe if there is one, I can document that because I think you all are doing um, the heavy lifting behind the scenes and you don't always um, get the credit that is deserved. So I want to thank you so much for keeping us safe. And uh, I recognize that uh, all things considered, that is the number one responsibility of the South Florida Water Management District. I'm glad to be back. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Olipich. Ms. Meads? 
Uh, thanks, Chairman. So, uh, Ryan Braun, Patty McNeely, David Rue, Emily Kenyon, we hear you. Sometimes I feel like we're in a mixed martial arts fight, a cage fight, a no-holds-barred fight. We stand at another moment when humans are faced with poison water. We use a lot of euphemisms in this business in order to lighten it up. But when you hear public comment like that, it cannot be ignored. To those of you who test samples, and in particular in this case, water samples, I'd like to take you to a legal case called U.S. versus Bar Labs. I don't know the details behind what happened, and I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. But if you're an analyst and you, are, you run an analytical unit, you should all have a copy and all understand U.S. versus Bar Labs. When you have a failure... You don't consider it a false positive. You don't test to show that it was an inaccurate test result. You assume that it was a failure, and you test with that in mind. I don't know if it took three weeks to get down to the truth. I don't know, and, I, and I'm not going to take a side on that. But I do want to encourage everyone to get a copy of that, read it, and learn from it. Um, finally, did anybody notice that the Hoover Dyke, the Hoover Dyke, they started construction in 1930 and finished it in 1937? Seven years? That's all that took? I, I look at how long things take now, and I know it's just the way it is, but sometimes I wonder. I, I am amazed. Seven years. Um, I'm glad to still be here. I love what we do. We get all kinds of public comments, not just publicly like now, but we get notes from people, and I appreciate them all, and I understand the passion. Someone recently sent us a note calling us idiots. Sometimes I feel like they're not wrong. <laughs> they weren't talking about the staff, by the way. Um, our staff is great. We're doing the best we can. Um, I love all of the stakeholders. I love the ranchers. I love the agriculture, the environmentalists, the, the people who just live here. We're going to do better tomorrow than we did today. We aren't going to stop. We'll work harder and smarter. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Meach. Colonel Rowan? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I like some of my other board members um, feel from the public comment that we received today that we can't really look the other way and just ignore it. And I agree with Cheryl and, and Jackie. But at the same time, we have a distinct mission in our agency and our agency executive director and his staff has been doing a tremendous job responding as one of the public speakers said, we've been chasing blue-green algae. Well, in essence, in essence, we have. Think about it for a minute. I mean, you have water contaminated. That's a public health risk. You have the estuary communities holding their breath as the blue-green algae you know, moves down the Caloosahatchee or the St. Lucie, wondering whether or not their businesses are going to be shut down or if their children's health are going to be at risk. This is some serious stuff. And I would agree, I think Jackie said it earlier, we're, we're at a turning point. And while our agency doesn't own all of the responsibilities and, and missions that address all these issues, I think that the interagency effort is imperative at this point. Jackie calls it a triangle, but it's interagency and bringing them to bear 
in order to see how we can move this forward. Because right now we're just in a reactive mode. You know, through Bartlett's taking staff resources and agency resources and sucking blue-green algae out of the water. I mean, that's reaction. How do we put this on a footing with our interagency partners to be more proactive or at least positive or get out in front of it? What does that take? How do we do that? And I think that maybe as a governing board, we need to explore that and see how we can um, move from just being in the reactive mode to maybe getting out in front of it. I don't have an answer, but those are my thoughts. Thank you. Well, thank you, Colonel Roman. Vice Chair Wagner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me okay? I can. Great. Um, I, I echo all the sentiments of our fellow, fellow board members with respect to this particular issue. Um, this is obviously a scary situation, uh, and it's one that has continued to build. Um, hopefully not to raise to a point where we're at a crescendo, but we're obviously in a situation now where people are pulling tap water out of their sink and getting sick. And it's not just um, a single singular incident, and it's not just um, in a singular jurisdiction anymore. You have people on the estuaries, you have people in West Palm Beach, you have dogs, you have children, you have mothers, you have people who are drinking water out of the tap and they're getting sick from it. That is a problem. Um, we know that it's, there's no magic bullet. Um, it's not like we forgot to turn a switch on in the, in the room and you turn the switch on and everything goes away. Uh, I wish the world were a little more simple that way, but obviously uh, it's not and nobody's perfect. Um, we are certainly at the mercy of mother nature and um, what she tends to do and when she tends to do it and how hot it gets and how much it rains and all those things affect obviously our, our situation. But with respect to the algal blooms and the, and the um, uh, issues with our water, Knowing that there's no easy answer, we also know that there can be no status quo. Um, we cannot be just another governmental agency that sits by uh, from time to time and says, oh, that's not really our responsibility. That's somebody else's responsibility. Um, we're in a situation now, I think, with a governing board and a staff who are all aligned and I think all have a mentality of playing quarterback in this particular situation in a way where we are willing to take the bull by its horns and do what we need to do to do our best to solve what is obviously a very dangerous situation. I find it uh, curious, if you would, that uh, for months and months, the city of West Palm Beach and others have talked to us about holding water back in the lake. And suddenly you don't really hear too much about that because the higher the lake levels are, the more likely we're going to have these harmful algal blooms. And it has to do with submerged aquatic vegetation and other uh, issues and sunlight and whatnot. But the reality is, is that Holding too much lake in the water is a contributing factor to these things. And so people have to recognize that, and they just need to get with reality. Um, number two is we also have to take charge of well, what's coming in. We cannot really do too much. I know we talked about there was some public comment today about um, deep injection wells in the muck at the bottom of the lake. But the continuing contribution of nutrients to our lake water is a problem. And if FDAX is not going to get out there and do their job, we are going to need to hold their feet to the fire because it's just ridiculous that we stand by idly while these sister agencies do nothing in the face of nutrients pouring into the, into the lake. I mean, there's a time and a place for people to say, you know what, enough's enough. Uh, it's one thing not to do your job, but it's another thing for me to sit by and watch other people not do their job. So we're going to force them to do their job. I don't want people coming to our meetings, talking a mile a minute, and saying absolutely nothing, because that's what happens every month. They come, and they spit these 
you know, things back and forth. And the reality is, is that another month goes by and nothing happens. And when they come to our meetings to talk, they don't talk about any things substantive. It, it's quite frankly, it's starting to get to the point of, of total irritation by me. Um, and, and I don't think we can no longer rely on other people to be actively participating in a meaningful way if time and time again it's proven that they don't. So I think that we do need, I'm echoing the sentiments of some of the other fellow board members here, I think we need to take charge. Not to say that we have not been, but I do agree that it's one thing to be running out of the gates reacting to a fire. It's another thing to be actively preventing things that create that fire. And I think that's the kind of alignment that we need to be in and the posture we need to be in. And um, that's, how, that's how I feel about this. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Vice Chair. I appreciate your comments. Actually, I appreciate all of your comments. Um, I, I want to thank the people, particularly the people who called in from West Palm Beach. Um, I, yeah, I'm a parent. I'm a runner. I'm a dog owner. And uh, your, you know, your comments really hit hard with me. And I, I feel the sense of urgency that, that you're trying to convey to us. And I know you want us to be proactive. I heard the Vice Chair say that. I heard other board members say that, and I think it's something we need to be doing. And I, I, I don't know particularly how we do that. I know that you know we're supposed to stay in our lane and all of that, but I do still think that we can push our sister agencies, as the vice chair said, and th there's got to be a way to do that. Uh, because clearly this governing board wants to push the envelope a little bit and not accept the status quo, and, and there has to be a way to do that. And we have one of the best staffs in the world, so I, I feel very confident that we're going to be able to do that, um, given the leadership of the governor, given the direction of the governing board, and given the capability of the staff. Because those are three things that should come together and really be able to push some results. I'd like to say to um, Dr. Weiskopf, I, th I think you've called in, I don't know, the last 10 or 15 meetings, and you're telling us to get an economist on, on staff. And I, I tend to agree with you, because a lot of what we do, um, th there's such a huge economic consequence to it. And it, it, it you know, may not be a bad thing to do as we're starting to look at cost-benefit analysis to start to look at, OK, let's, you know, what's the economic, or, or what do the economists say uh, when it comes to that? Um, you know, I'm not going to tell through who to hire or how to hire, but it, it's just something I think you should look at. Um, you also said, you know, you know, we work for free. and, and that's true, but I, I think that we all work, you know, with the knowledge that a job well done is really payment enough for all of us, and, and working with such a fantastic staff is really payment enough for us. So I'm, I, I don't think that we do work for free. I think we're, we're all very happy to be here, and we all feel ourselves very fortunate uh, to be able to serve right now at this time. Um, and I'm about to be quiet, but I'll, I'll say two more things. I want to wish uh, Noah Valenstein um, the best of luck. I forgot to mention him in my opening remarks. Um, he's been a great servant to the state of Florida, and uh, he will be missed. Um, he's a great partner for this water management district. Uh, he was incredibly helpful to us in, in a myriad of issues. So I, I know I wish you the best in, in whatever you end up doing. And Gary uh, Ritter, I look forward to working with you and your, your new capability, or new capacity, sorry, as the uh, Okeechobee um, city manager, or count, yeah, city manager, or administrator. I think that's wonderful. You're, you're, you're moving there. Florida Farm Bureau is uh, losing a good one, and, and Okeechobee is getting a good one. Um, and with that, I think we'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks.